Well, good evening, everybody. It's good to be here again. I was reading a scripture over Facebook that somebody had posted, and I immediately, it intrigued me to the point that I came out here and I reread the scripture again and I tried to examine um, the scripture for what it was saying and how it could be applied in 2021. Uh, I want to go to the word to the Lord in prayer if I could. Father, I ask you to anoint the words now. Lord, you see the thoughts that is in my head already. Lord, I pr pr pray that you put the, your words in my mouth to tell the people tonight, your will be done. You speak through this little message tonight. I thank you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. I'm in uh, Isaiah 43. Isaiah 43 is where I am, and we're only going to do the first three verses. I could probably go longer, but there's enough here in these verses that can definitely build a message. He starts out, he says in chapter 43, verse 1, <clears throat> But now thus saith the Lord, the Lord's doing the talking, now thus saith the Lord that created thee. Notice that there was something that was created. And not only was it created, he even lists the name, O Jacob, and he that formed thee. Not only did he create, but he also put the formation on it. My little Nuthead grandson was in my little room over the weekend and he found this little can of Play-Doh. And, uh, I don't know how long it's been out here. It's been out here a long time, uh, older than he is old. It's been out here. I don't know how long it's been, but we was playing with it and we stuffed it all back inside the little container and uh he's got it in there pretty good when he put it back in he put it back in good and uh i'm trying to loosen it up but what we was doing with it the other day is we was trying to form a man out of this play-doh and you know when I put it in my hand and I start squeezing in my hand, I don't know if you could actually tell it or not, but if you could examine this under a microscope, you would probably see handprints in these finger parts right here. You would see my fingerprint. And the more we kept playing with this, the more it was intriguing for me and him to take that Play-Doh and start trying to form a man from the glob of Play-Doh. Now, I'm using this as an example of what we was doing, but this verse here says he created, meaning he created like this, and then the Bible says, and he that formed thee, and not only did he make it, but he also began to start forming, like I'm squeezing this Play-Doh. I'm forming it to my handprint and to my fist. The more pressure I put, the more it changes the handprint. And you can see the different hand finger locations here. Well, God didn't use his hand to form us, but he did create 
the matter. You know, I remember one thing that he said to me is he took off a little bar like that right there. And he even made the comment, he said that he started out like a seed. Now, I didn't ever tell that boy to say that. He didn't really know anything much more than that. But he even actually pinched off a little bit and said that it started from a seed. I thought that was pretty miraculous that he would go and say that. So this scripture here says that he created and he formed. He's, he's talking to Israel. He's saying, fear not, for I have redeemed thee, meaning I have given thee salvation. Now, who the Lord is talking to is people that know him. If people knew the, knew the Lord God back in the day of Isaiah, when Isaiah was written some 700 years before the birth of Christ, he's saying here to Israel that I have redeemed thee, meaning that the Lord God was in 700 years, he was going to, pay the ultimate price by sending his son. But see, Isaiah already knew the Lord God before Jesus ever came to the earth. The Lord God was the Lord God because no one can be redeemed other than through the blood and the belief in the Lord God. And salvation, no doubt, came to this man named Isaiah some 700 years before Jesus was born. But he uses the word redeemed, for I have redeemed thee. Not only did he redeem thee, I have called thee by thy name, by the name of Isaiah. I don't remember right off the top of my head what the name of Isaiah actually means. But I'm sure that there is somewhere I can find out what the name of the word Isaiah means. But it says, I have called thee by thy name. And listen, thou art mine. So it would be like the Lord saying, look, I have not only created you, I have formed you. And I've given you a name, and now you are mine. And it's almost like this Plato is in my hand, and he's telling Isaiah here that, you know, you are mine. Who he's referring to is Israel. Oh, Israel is who he's refer referring to. And then in verse 2 is part of the message that intrigued me. This verse 1 sets the, the location of who God was talking to. But now look how he shifts gears. When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. When thou passest through the waters, meaning the trouble of this life, I believe that I could look at that and be able to tell, okay, what waters are we going through today? I would think that we could actually say that we all in 2021 are going through waters, every one of us. Every one of us today is going through a certain amount of waters. Uh, waters can be treacherous. Uh, waters that you don't know how deep it is could be weary, you might say, um, when you're in the water and you don't know what is in the water with you. I mean, I'm, 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 uh, when I watch TV and I see gators in the water to little animals up there drinking on the bank, I just turn the channel. 
because I can't handle to see a big gator grab a little animal and the animal's dead. The animal's gone. The animal's drowned. The, the, the gator is way bigger and way stronger than the animal. The animal don't get away. 90% of the time, the animal is eat and literally tore apart while the thing is still breathing. But now what he's saying here, when thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. Meaning the Lord is our safety. Now, he's referring to people that know the Lord. So in 2021, when you go through your headache of water, the water is a picture of trouble of this life. And even the Christian is going to go through the troubled waters of this life. I don't know the troubled waters I'm going to go through tomorrow. But what the Bible says here that he is going to deliver when thou passest through the waters, that means we get from one side to the other side. When we pass through, we make it from the side that we started on to the side that we get over. He says, I will be with thee. And that's what he's saying here. And then he says, and through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. Now, a river would be a little bit different than when you pass through the waters. Waters could be where the water is a non-moving water, but you still don't know how deep it is. The water is black, so therefore you can't see the things that are hiding. But in a river, it has a tendency to take you downstream. It tends to be deeper. It tends to be where the water is carrying you further than you would want to go. And he says right here, And through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. They meaning more than one. We don't know the rivers that we're going to pass through. I'm talking about the rivers of the trouble of this life. We don't know the rivers that we're going to pass through. See, God took the time to form and to create, and obviously he's going to protect the ones that are his people, and he's referring to the ones that he created and the ones that he formed, the ones that know the Lord Jesus Christ. A person that is unsaved, the Lord is not talking to the unsaved in these verses right here. He's referring these to the ones that are saved, and I'm fixing to show that to you in just a few minutes. The rivers shall not overflow thee when thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned. Now you remember in the book of uh, Daniel, I believe it was, where the three Hebrew boys was thrown into the fire and, and I believe Daniel was there as well and, and there was a fourth man that was in the fire with the three Hebrew boys to the point that there was no smoke. There was no singe of fire on any of their clothing. They actually put them in, in coats and fuel that would easily ignite to a fire. This fire was so hot that it killed the men that threw them three men in the fire. The fire was that hot that even the ones that threw them in succumbed to the heat of the blaze. But yet, the men that went into the fire, God was with them. See, he's reminding us here, when thou walkest through the fire, when that time comes, 
I just be honest with you people, I don't want to go through the fire. But you know, the fire is a good thing in a way because the fire brings the metal to the sharpness and it brings, it molds the, the clay and it molds the, the so-called quote Play-Doh. It gives the Lord glory that when we go through the fire, it tempers you and I that are saved. It's, it, it, it tempers me and you. That is, if I'm talking to you tonight and you're saved, the fire automatically tempers who you are, which it makes you strong and it makes you, it's just like my little uh, grandson. I got him a weight bench. So as he grows up, he can push the weights and see how much more he can do. And the older he gets, the more he's going to be able to push up on that bar to exercise his muscles. And he's going to see the strength that he's able to do as he grows up. See, he's only six years old now, so he can barely handle the bar. Most less any of the weights, he can barely handle the bar because he's never done it before. But as he grows up, he gets more used to the bar. Well, when the fire comes, the fire is a picture of the heat that we go through that basically helps to form our clay. If God wants to divide the clay, the heat has a tendency to be able to pull apart the clay. But see, God is able to also put the clay back and form the clay back again to please him. So that's what the fire is doing here. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned. Neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. Meaning, if this here is fireproof, the flame can't hurt this. If I buried a piece of gold in my in my clay, and let me show you what I'm talking about. I'll show you what I'm talking about. I've got this little rock right here. And I'm going to put that little rock right in that clay right there. Now, if I cover that up like that right there, and I hide it in that clay, and I left this, and I went out and took this and put it in the fire pit, the likelihood that that clay right there is going to stay intact. And the reason it's going to stay intact is because it's something that can't burn. And when we're, we're, when we're hidden in the Lord, like we're supposed to be in the Lord, we have a certain amount of protection. And what he's saying right here is, thou shalt not be burned, neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. Why? Because it's covered by the ability of God. Now the rock is inside. And I can tear this open and show you. That right there is the rock that was hidden inside. And see the Lord protects. His people. From the problems of this life. Now it might seem like voodoo. To sit here and tell you that. Especially if you're out here tonight. And you are a lost man. You don't have the coating or the covering around you when the time comes and you have to go through the fire. But I've got great news. You can get the covering today. You can get the covering of the Lord today. Just by simply calling out on the Lord Jesus and understanding that time is going to come, that we're going to be tested that God created and God formed. And he said that we're going to go through the waters and we're going to go through the rivers and we are going to go through the fire. But notice what verse 3 says. 
For I am the Lord thy God. Now, if you're lost today, the Lord is not your God. He wants to be your God, and he can be your God. But until you get born of the Spirit of God, you're not the Lord's right now. There's a way you get the Lord by simply inviting him to come inside. So when I read verse number three, for I am the Lord thy God, you can be today. If you're, if you're, if you're lost, you can be the Lord thy God. I mean, the Lord thy God, for I am the Lord thy God talking about a personal God. He can be your personal God today. It goes on to say, the Holy One of Israel. There's only one God. There's only one God that's going to give salvation. The Bible says in Romans 10 and verse 9, if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thy heart, that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. And the Bible also says, for whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. So see, salvation can come to you so that you can be included in these verses today that we're reading in the book of Isaiah. This can be for you as well. And he says, for I am the Lord thy God, the Holy One of Israel, thy Savior. Again, if you're not saved, he's not your Savior. He's talking to Christians right here in these three verses. If you're out here today and you don't know the Lord, you can know the Lord. Here's what I would like for you to do, if you would. If you want more information about knowing this Lord, call me. I give you a special invitation to call me. Uh, the website is elderlyministry.com. You can go to that website, go down about halfway, and you will see a large link, bigger than all the other links, that will take you to YouTube. Now, this is my YouTube channel direct to the videos that you'll see. But if you want to go to Elderly Ministry, all you got to do is go there and there's a contact button that you can hit that will have my cell number. And you, I want you to know that you are encouraged to call me. Don't play this salvation thing off. If you're out there tonight and you hearing me and salvation has not taken place in your life, then you are not one of God's people. Even though he created and he formed, and yes, he, he, he formed every one of us, but not every one of us is subject to the Lord. Even though the Lord created and the Lord formed, not everyone believes in the Lord Jesus Christ. And the way that you get to be in the family of God and to be able to call the Lord God your Savior and Lord is you believe that Jesus was sent from heaven, sent to the earth, lived for 33 years, he was nailed to a cross. He was raised by God from the dead. And today he's on the right hand of God the Father, giving you an invitation to be in his family. Because he says here, thy Savior, he wants to be your Savior today. And what you need to do is simply call on him. If you need help, I'd ask you to call me. There's a number there that you can reach. 
and the Lord wants to save. So I hope that you got something from this. If I can do anything for you, by all means, give me a shout. I'll be glad to talk with you anytime. But don't put off your soul salvation because it's what gets you to the place of heaven. And you're not promised another tomorrow. You're not promised tonight. But if you happen to hear this video, you have been given a special invitation to get a hold of me and I will take the Bible and I will walk you through the way that you get Jesus in your life. I'd be glad to help you if I can. Thank y'all for tuning in. I appreciate it very much.